Before we get in uh, to talking about the research breakthroughs, because uh, we got some good uh, research articles that have kind of transformed my thought process on training over the last couple weeks, we're going to get into that. But first, I want to talk about a another book that I've been reading. And this is actually, I'm rereading this book because I think it's the best book on mental training ever. Uh, it's called The Inner Game of Tennis. So The Inner Game of Tennis basically is about self one versus self two. So every athlete, every person has two versions of themselves. So self one is that analytical side. So they think through things. If they're not making a shot, it's because their elbow's not in or they're not following through. They always think there's some sort of correction. Uh, so we can call that the conscious side. And then there's that self two, which is more of that subconscious side where when you're in that zone, when you're in that flow and you're just killing and you have no idea what you're doing, that's self two. Um, obviously, the best athletes in the world are self two athletes. Uh, also, why a lot of the best players in the world don't become great trainers, because a lot of times they're so self two that they have no idea what they're actually doing on the court. So I've talked to some of our players and I'll ask them questions like, hey, how do you do this? And they'll be like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and that's that's the correct answer a lot of times uh, for the best players, the best shooters. It's like, hey, man, what are you doing with your wrist? How are you falling through? And they're like, eh, I have no idea. I just shoot to make. Um, whereas the, the bad shooters are breaking it down to a science of exactly how they flick their wrist. Um, so that's self one versus self two. Like a lot of these best players are just self two. Um, now, it's okay to have to be in tune with that self one and here and there make corrections. Uh, but too many athletes I see, you get carried away with that self one, always thinking that there's some sort of correction and you take away from that self two and we never become a killer. You got to understand to be alive, just to breathe, you got to understand how many billions of things have to go right at the right time billions and billions of processes within the body are going right at the right times. To make a shot, to jump high, to do any athletic skill, do you understand how much has to go into that? Not only the billions of things at the cellular level, but the timing of the joints, the fluidity, the energy transfer, all of this stuff. This can only be controlled by self too. The only way that you can become a great, great shooter or jump really, really high is doing it at that subconscious level because you cannot consciously control timing. That's one thing that you cannot do. Just like you can't like wish yourself to being a good dancer. You can't just be like, I'm gonna, you can't think through steps and then all of a sudden get that fluidity, right? That has to come from self too. So um, the point that I'm trying to make is when we start becoming self one and we start making too many corrections, we are showing ourselves that we don't trust self two. We have a lack of trust in self two. And then self one starts to take over. Now fluidity is all killed. Timing is all killed. So anytime that I give you guys mechanics advice, shooting or jumping, whatever it is, you got to understand that we're trying to make a correction and then we're trying to get that back to self too. It's not, we're not saying that, hey, your self two sucks, so you need to become self one dominant. What we're saying is basically, I want you to make this correction. I want you to rep it out and I want to get, get it to that subconscious so that we never have to think about this again. And you got to start to trust self too. So if you're in a shooting slump, or you're not making shots one day, what do we all do? We all go, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm not tucking my elbow, or I'm not getting enough from my legs. We always think that there's some sort of mechanical correction, when a lot of the time, it's just us being on that self one side, when we really need to just quiet that self one and trust self two. Have you ever been on fire? Have you ever had days where you made a lot of shots, where you were dominant, you couldn't miss? Then you have the ability to shoot. And on that day, you found self too. But on the other days, when you can't find that same zone, it's because you don't trust self too, and you think that there's some sort of correction. So what hoopers do, 
and I do this myself. Over the last 10 years, I've done this a lot with my shot. I'll come in, I'll start, you know, getting up shots, I miss, and then I'm like, hmm, I got to make a correction. I make that correction and maybe it does start falling. And then I go, okay, that's my new shot. And it works for that day. And then I come back the next day, I try that again. Oh, it doesn't work. Mm, I got to make this correction. Then I make that correction. Sometimes it starts to go in. And then the next day I come in and that same thing doesn't work. And so you're in this constant cycle of changing your form. Or you find something on Instagram where a shooting coach is telling you to do something. And then you're, you get away from who you are and you become who they want you to be. So basically what happens is you, be, you get in this cycle of there's always a correction, self one, self one, self one, when really you need to shut up and you need to trust self too. If you've ever made shots, if you've ever been on fire, you have the ability to shoot. You just got to get in that place mentally to then actually be able to do that consistently. So here's another thing that I've taken from this book so far. Negative judgment of the results of one's efforts tends to make one try even harder. Positive evaluation tends to make one try to force oneself into that same pattern on the next shot. Both positive and negative thinking inhibit spontaneity. Boom. So we all think about like, oh, I got to get these negative thoughts out of my head. I got to get these positive thoughts in my head. I got to start complimenting myself. Whoa there, because getting caught up in that negative, getting caught up in that positive can be a bad thing. So what they're talking about is when you start over complimenting yourself, you start setting this standard and you start trying to replicate that, right? So if you go make a lot of money, you're all of a sudden in that mindset of, I got to do this. I got to keep doing what I was doing, but what's going to get you to the next level maybe isn't what got you to that level. So that spontaneity and that ability to just be present, a lot of times that's what's going to take you to that next level. But when you over compliment yourself, sometimes you stay stagnant, right? So you got to be careful. And I've implemented this in my training. I think when I first started as a trainer, I used to give a lot of compliments because I thought that it would get people thinking positive and they would get going. And so I tried to take out the negative stuff. And every time somebody made a shot, it was like, yeah, good job. Yes. Keep going. And then I realized, oh, there is such thing as over complimenting. And now I only throw in compliments when they're absolutely needed or when they're absolutely necessary. Uh, but you want to get people to start to be present and not rely on that positive reinforcement or that negative reinforcement. So another, another funny thing from this book is he kind of talks about trash talking. He talks about the worst way to trash talk is what people do. Oh, your mom is fat, whatever. Your mom is ugly. Like that stuff doesn't work. The best thing that you could do for trash talking is go up to somebody and be like, hey, how did you hold your follow through on that shot? right? Because that they had this external focus. They're out of their body, their self too. And now they're like, hmm, thanks for the compliment. What I did is I had my elbow up and I followed through. I made sure my elbow was up above my eye. Now they're inside their body. They have an internal focus, right? So that is a quick way to take somebody out of their zone and get them into that self one overthinkers mentality. Go up to somebody and compliment them. If they hit a couple shots in a row, man, great shot. Did you produce that force from your legs or do you do it more with the upper body? And they start going, hmm, let me think about what I, oh yeah, yeah, I do it mostly from the legs. Now on that next shot, they're thinking internally. They're thinking about uh, that advice that they just gave you. And now that took them out of that narrow external focus. So the more you can be in that narrow external focus, the more you can be self too. The more you're internally focused on some sort of correction or anything inside the body, the more you are self one. So a narrow external focus is basically, can you focus on a part of the rim, right? Like, can I focus on the back of the rim or everybody's different? Can I focus on the front of the rim or two inches above the rim? Everybody has a different preference, but can I lock in on that point every time? And then just think about getting it to that spot, right? Just make the shot. That's a narrow external focus. 
or think the arc of the ball, like see the arc of the ball uh, through that process, watch it going in through your mind. Or another tip that they give is where, where does your body position want to end up? So instead of saying, Hey, I got to get my elbow above my eye on follow through, just put it there, show it to yourself. Think about Steve Nash at the free throw line. He would dribble and he would rehearse his shot every time. That's a great way to get to self too. So maybe in your warm ups or whatever, get there. Or maybe if you're missing some shots at a timeout, show yourself what you want and take a vivid image of that. So don't think elbow above the eye, just go through that motion and just look at yourself, right? Take notice of where that position is. And now you got to go, okay, self two knows I trust self two. You got it from here. Now you get into a game. All of a sudden we're externally focused. We are self two. We start hitting shots. All right. So I want you to keep in mind that, yes, there's times where we're correcting form, but we always got to get back to self too long term if we want to be great shooters. And I would definitely advise you guys to look into that book, uh, The Inner Game of Tennis, because I've read a lot of sports psychology books. And sports psychology books, a lot of it is just repeating the same thing over and over and over again with slightly different stories in each one. Uh, The Inner Game of Tennis is very, very different and it'll change your whole perspective on how you mentally approach the game.